Thank you, Kevin, and thank you, everyone, for having me here tonight. I am super excited to be back on campus, <laughs> and I'm more excited to be here with you guys tonight to talk about this topic that I, no one is talking about. So for those of you who don't know me, I have been known as a world traveler since the age of 14 when I first traveled abroad by myself to go to Spain. Now, this is uncommon for most 14-year-olds, but it's even more uncommon for my family, except for my aunt, Marianne. A few years ago, I reconnected with Marianne, and I found out that we have a lot in common. Marianne, in the 1960s, received a Fulbright scholarship to live and work in Thailand. From there, she traveled throughout Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Europe. Marianne still loves to travel today. So tonight, I want to dedicate this talk to Marianne. About four months ago, Marianne was diagnosed with intestinal cancer, and it makes digesting food really difficult. So whenever I call her up or go and visit, we end up talking about bowel movements. Because whether or not we like to talk about it, pooping is a key indicator of good health. So you're all probably wondering where I'm going right now, but this is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about poop. I want to talk about scat, caca, doo-doo, feces, turds, crap. I want to talk about shit. Shit isn't sexy. But how often do we talk about things that make us uncomfortable? Here's Rose George. Just recently, she gave it a wonderful TED Talk on the taboos of poo. And tonight, I want to follow in her footsteps. Tonight, I want to push the envelope a little. I might even want to gross you out. But more importantly, I want to change the way you think about big, complex, and taboo issues. And to do this, I'm going to use the example of poop. So, do you know what the readers of the British Medical Journal considered the greatest medical advance since 1860? What beat anesthesia, antibiotics, and vaccines? It was the, it was the sanitary revolution. It was the invention of water being piped into homes, sewer systems, and most importantly, the toilet. Now, maybe you've never thought about this, but disposing of human waste has been a problem ever since man began pooping. And because of that, people have tried to figure out solutions for centuries. The toilet has a history that dates back to 3000 BC. So, I've been talking for a while. I want to show you a fun Mighty Python clip that tells us a little bit more about the history of the toilet. It is, the title of this clip is, What Have the Romans Ever Done for Us? They let us wipe the bastards. They've taken everything we had. And not just from us, from our fathers, and from our fathers' fathers. And from our fathers' fathers' fathers. Yeah. And from our fathers' 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 fathers. You're right, Sam. Don't labor the point. And what have they ever given us in return? The aqueduct? What? The aqueduct. Oh, yeah, yeah, they did give us that. Uh, that's true, yeah. And the sanitation. Oh, yeah, the sanitation, man. Do you remember what the city used to be like? Yeah, all right, I'll grant you, the aqueduct and the sanitation are two things the Romans have done. And the roads. Well, yeah, obviously yeah. not roads. I mean, the roads go without sand, don't they? But apart from the sanitation, the aqueduct and the roads... Irrigation. Medicine? Uh, education. OK, so I think we get the point. The Romans played a really big role in sanitation. They were thinking about it. Here's an example of a Roman-built latrine that was even connected to a, sewer, to a sewer system. It wasn't actually the Romans who first invented the toilet. It was either the Scots or the Greeks. But regardless, the point is that the toilet has been around for 5,013 years, and we still don't want to talk about shit. Talking about shit isn't sexy. I remember the first time I realized how awesome a toilet is. I went to Nicaragua my freshman year of college, 
and I was placed with a rural host family for four nights. Just to give you a bit of the sense of the situation I was in, the home I was living in was made of cardboard scraps, plastic and cardboard scraps. The floor was dirt. I had a chicken living under my bed that I still haven't figured out. And there were rats crawling around on the roof at night. The bathroom didn't have a toilet. It looked something like this. This is a latrine. It's a hole in the ground that you squat over. This is my first time ever using a latrine. And my eight-year-old host sister was in charge of taking me to the latrine every time I needed to use the bathroom to scare away any spiders, rats, or other animals that might be impeding my use of this hole. To say the very least, I was absolutely terrified. But I was also really grateful for the courage of an eight-year-old. Looking back on that experience, I realized how lucky I am, I was in that moment, to have a relatively safe and enclosed area to do my business. Because the reality is that there are 2.5 billion people on this planet that don't have a safe place to go to the bathroom. 2.5 billion people. That's not one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, but eight times the population of the United States don't have a safe place to go to the bathroom. That's 40% of the world's population. So what do 2.5 billion people do if they don't have a safe place to go to the bathroom? About one, point, about one billion of them do what public health terminology refers to as open defecation. They poop in the open. They poop in a, in running, near running water or in a field, and it contaminates their environment and it harms their health. Open defecation is a cycle that is impossible to break without proper sanitation. So I studied abroad in Bolivia, and part of the experience was to live with a rural family for a week. Are we starting to see a trend? So like most of us do, when we go to someone's house for the first time, we ask where the bathroom is. When I asked my host mom that, she pointed to a field. I was really confused at first, until I started seeing other people squatting in the field. I then realized what I had to do. I also realized something else. I realized why women all over the world traditionally wear skirts. It provides a little bit of privacy when going to the bathroom like this. So I then kicked myself for not having packed a skirt. <laughs> um, instead, to avoid some embarrassment, I woke up either really early in the morning or held it until really late at night. But again, this was my reality for one week, and this is the reality for over a billion people every single day. Talking about shit isn't sexy, but it's necessary. So thankfully, there are many people in this world who talk about taboos like poo. I talk about poop, and I'm not alone. In fact, my job is with an organization called Wash Advocates in Washington, DC, and I am paid to talk about poop and this problem and the solutions. So there's one prominent foundation who has spent millions of dollars to reinvent the toilet. They want to end open defecation and the poverty, death, and disease that are associated with it. But we saw from the Mighty Python clip that the solution has actually been around for centuries. Is reinventing the toilet really the solution? Or do we need a new approach? Talking about shit is necessary. So after gra graduating from Gettysburg, I had a lot of questions. And I went to Guatemala to try to figure some of those out. I wanted to know why 2.5 billion people don't have a safe place to go to the bathroom. And I had a great mentor, Lynn Roberts. And he lived by the mantra that solutions don't have to be complicated. We have to go back to the basics. And in my two years in Guatemala, I narrowed those down to two basic facts and ideas. 
The first being relationship building and the second being education. Building relationships. We need to know people's names and their stories in order to solve big problems. An example of this for this, the sanitation problem is community health clubs, where leaders of communities lead communities to have conversations about their problems, and the community members themselves decide how they want to take action. Here are some photos of women in Africa, um, actually women and men in Africa, taking part in, in a community health club. And of course, underlying all of this is education. And of course, education needs to be at the community level, but it also needs to be public. This is a toilet-shaped house that the president of, a, a former president of the World Toilet Organization built in South Korea. And it's actually been turned into a park where families and children can come to learn about the history of the toilet. They can make poo not so taboo. So, I don't know how, how often you're inspired when sitting on a toilet, but this is how I work every day. <laughs> and here's what amazes me. There are 2.5 billion people on this earth that don't have a safe place to go to the bathroom. And yet, every day, each one of us poops. Or at least we're supposed to. <laughs> and we flush that poop away with water that is clean enough to drink. So maybe the taboos aren't only there, they're here too. And I have no idea why Alaska is not highlighted in this map. <laughs> Just to point that out. Um, so, so my question to you all tonight is what taboos in your own life are you not facing? What conversations are you not having? And what implications could that have in your own life, in your family, in your community, and in your world? Let's start asking these questions and having these conversations because we might find that the solutions are simpler than we think. So let's actively go against the grain and talk about shit that makes us uncomfortable because we might start realizing that the solutions are easier than we imagine. So I need some audience participation. Say it with me. Talking about Come on. <laughs> shit isn't sexy, but it's necessary. Thank you so much.